carbs. Now, in the context of a higher carb diet, as much as it pains me to admit, because I'm such a defender of saturated fats, there are a couple studies that are very well done. If I recall, it was some groups in Europe, um, in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition, where they had, in the context of a high carb diet, and then manipulating the saturation of fats, the high carb and high saturated fat was the worst for insulin resistance and insulin signaling. And so when it comes to, again, the background of high carb, then I, as much as it pains me to admit, because I'm such a defender of, of saturated fats from natural sources, I, I, which is where they come from, that begins to be problematic. I, I think it's problematic and not just, you know, for, for, for metabolic health, but cardiometabolic health. I mean, that's where you get small, dense LDL yep. particles. Again, it's the combination of the saturated fat and the re- refined carbohydrates. Now, yeah. are we talking about when you're having a, you know, a high saturated fat diet in combination with what you call carbohydrate, high carb? I mean, is this, what if you're eating, you know, fruits and vegetables and, you know, maybe yeah. some oats? Is that the same as yeah. eating cookies and right, processed foods? Right. Yeah, no. Of course, the easy answer would be no. But but I can't recall the specifics the specifics of that study. And anytime I can't cite a study, I want to be careful in the answer. But my view would be: what is the underlying insulin effect of those carbs? So if these are low glycemic load type carbs, where the insulin response is going to be very modest, right? Insulin itself causes insulin resistance, and again, rapidly. And and so what I think is. If you take the context of an insulin spike with a saturated fat load, that's uniquely harmful with regards to insulin resistance. So back to the idea of what are the carbs, I think if you're talking about the low glycemic load carbs, like cruciferous vegetables and berries and citrus fruits, for example, no, there's almost nothing. And then you chase that down with a tablespoon of coconut oil, the most, sat- the f- most concentrated form of saturated fat on the planet, I think you're fine. Well, coconut oil is a bit of a, an outlier because so much of it's MCT, which doesn't follow, which is not a substrate for ceramides. So it doesn't quite fit. But in that case, no, I think that would be perfectly fine. But you are touching on what is, the, to me, the obvious villain. As much as we have increasingly two camps of people saying, no, it's the seed oils. And I'm generally more, just because I'm an insulin resistance guy in the notes of refined starches and sugars, the fact is they always come together. And so the more a person has a dietary ideology that's just simply based on the idea of don't get your carbs or don't get your food from bags and boxes with barcodes, you're getting rid of both the refined starches and sugars and the refined oils. Anything else is going to be fine for the average, for most people. Just less bags and boxes with barcodes, more, more whole foods, you're fine. And but what about like fructose versus glucose? If you're having more fructose in the fruit, is that really causing the same insulin response as a refined? No, it's not. Or no, it absolutely is not. No, fructose itself will not elicit an insulin response whatsoever. Now the body will convert some of that fructose to glucose, which is why the diabetic who's gone hypoglycemic can just drink a cup of orange juice, and within minutes it'll start to you know that's such a concentrated load of fructose that they will see a glycemic excursion. But no, fructose isn't the same. But even still. Depending on the person, you know, you and I were two lean, healthy people, we could get away with it. If I'm talking to an overweight type 2 diabetic, then I say, all right, well, the most sugary of the fruits, just be more careful with, like, say, a a mango or or a banana. Um, Then I would say, all right, you maybe want to be a little more careful because your disorder is you don't burn glucose, you don't burn sugar very well. And so you just be careful with the most sugary of the fruits, but then everything else enjoy liberally.